The year was 2009. The renowned scientific journal Nature featured a groundbreaking article that captivated paleontologists worldwide. It revolved around the subject of the giant boa snake. Dr. Jason Head's research team made a significant discovery in the early 2000s in the Cerrajon coal mines of Colombia, a massive vertebral bone. Upon analysis, they realized it belonged to a snake. When compared to the vertebrae of a modern boa constrictor, this fossilized creature was significantly larger. So, the research team named this ancient giant snake Titanoboa serahonesis, after the site of its discovery, Serahone. Based on the 28 vertebral and rib fossils found at the excavation site, the research team estimated Titanoboa's length to be an astonishing 13 meters. This made it not only much larger than today's green anaconda, believed to be the biggest snake, but also on par with the size of a Tyrannosaurus rex. On top of that, its estimated weight was around 1,135 kilograms, roughly equivalent to an adult giraffe. In fact, during a paleontological meeting in Los Angeles in October 2013, Dr. Jason Head, who penned a research paper on the Titanoboa, unveiled insights from a newly analyzed fossil sample. Factoring in a skull length of about 40 centimeters, he proposed that the Titanoboa's originally assumed 13-meter length be adjusted to 14.3 meters, with a variance of plus-minus 1.28 meters. How exactly did the Titanoboa develop such a massive body size? What did it eat, and how did it live? Let's dive into the fascinating story of the Titanoboa. The Titanoboa appeared around 59 million years ago, in the Paleocene Epoch, following the Age of Dinosaurs. However, Titanoboa wasn't the only giant creature of its time. In the same Cerrajon strata where Titanoboa was discovered, fossils of a 6-meter-long marine reptile resembling a crocodile called a Charontisichus, were found, as well as massive turtles like Puentemis, with shells reaching 1.5 meters, and the even larger Carbonemis. The existence of various massive reptiles in the same region and in the same time frame suggests environmental factors that supported these large sizes. Many scientists turned their attention to a particular environmental factor. Temperature. Reptiles are ectothermic, meaning their metabolic rate varies with external temperatures. In warmer conditions, they produce energy faster and in larger quantities, which in turn supports a larger body size. Therefore, for colossal reptiles like the Titanoboa to emerge, it was essential for the surrounding temperatures to be high. So, how warm would it need to be? Based on the fact that marine anacondas can attain a length of about 7 meters in environments with an average temperature of 27 degrees Celsius, the research team hypothesized that the Titanoboa could have sustained its massive size in temperatures ranging from 30 degrees Celsius to 33 degrees Celsius. So what was the temperature in this region during the Paleocene Epoch? To determine this, Dr. Jonathan B.B., a member of the research team, established the temperature based on carbon dioxide concentrations in core parts of marine strata around Sarahon. The results indicated that the regional temperature ranged from 28 degrees Celsius to 31 degrees Celsius, suitable for the Titanoboa's habitat. Research by paleontologists Hara Miro and Fabiani further reinforced this claim. Their analysis of plant fossils from the Cerrajon strata, which looked at carbon isotope ratios and the density of stomata on leaves, revealed that the atmospheric carbon dioxide concentration was 50% higher than it is presently, resulting in land temperatures well above 28 degrees Celsius. In other words, the tropical rainforests of Colombia in the past were hotter than they are today providing the perfect environment for the emergence of giant reptiles like Titanoboa. However, a scientist emerged to challenge this claim. That scientist was paleoclimatologist Kale Snyderman. He countered, Hey, 
then how do you explain the ancient lizard Megalinea from the temperate regions of not-so-hot Australia, growing up to 4.5 meters? He pointed out the limitations of the temperature hypothesis, saying that if temperature determined the size of reptiles, then lizards in today's tropics should be at least 10 meters long. Dr. Kale instead suggested that Titanoboa grew so large due to competition with mammals. Usually, when the competition between different species intensifies, there's a selective pressure to become smaller to avoid that pressure from the competition. Conversely, if there's less competition, there's a selective pressure to grow larger. In the post-dinosaur era of Colombia's tropical rainforests, there were no significant large carnivorous mammals to rival the Titanoboa and other reptiles. As a result, Titanoboa was able to monopolize its food supply and secure enough energy, which in turn influenced its large size. Thus, even today, opinions remain divided on the cause of Titanoboa's extreme growth. Perhaps both temperature and competition influenced the size of the Titanoboa. By the way, setting aside the reason for its immense size, how was the Titanoboa, weighing over a ton, able to navigate on land with such a hefty frame? Many paleontologists answer that Titanoboa's primary habitat was not on land, but in water, so there was no burden from its weight. The basis for this answer lies in the Titanoboa's teeth. While most snakes have teeth firmly attached to their jaws, the Titanoboa's teeth were loosely attached. Contrary to the typical boas we know today, Titanoboa had numerous closely set teeth. These teeth, along with a mucus-like substance, were perfectly designed to grip and eat slick-bodied fish. This is indeed a characteristic in fish-eating snakes like the black sea snake and the brown water snake. So it's probable that the Titanoboa's primary diet wasn't the giant crocodilian creatures we often see in illustrations, but large fish. Within the boa family, Titanoboa is the only one known so far to have primarily consumed fish. For the large fish of that era, like the massive lungfish and the arapaima, the Titanoboa must have been an absolute terror. So, how did this massive snake, which dominated the jungle rivers, disappear? The exact cause and timing of Titanoboa's extinction is not yet clear, but some scientists point to a drop in temperature as a reason for its disappearance. As data shows, after a sharp rise in the Paleocene Epoch, the Earth's temperature began to plummet around 49 million years ago. This temperature decline could have been devastating to creatures accustomed to living in places with average temperatures above 30 degrees Celsius. There's no way to overcome environmental changes after all. And try to picture something like this in this area. Fast forward hundreds of millions of years into the future and imagine a world where the Amazon rainforests become even hotter and the anaconda's rivals have all vanished. Could we witness the rise of a new Titanoboa, with today's anaconda evolving again into a colossal behemoth? Science is a window to the world, and this has been Science Dream. Thank you for watching.